So following on now from the last video, this is what we're up to. So I've cut that hole in the inner wing now and I've threaded the wiring through here. See, I've taped all this together. Um, gonna use a grommet around this hole. So this hole will have a nice bit of protection around it. So we're gonna have all the protection in the inner arch. So I'm just working out where it's gonna go. So when it's up, in here i'm just checking the clearances between the coilovers there's tons of room i'm going to show you on the other side um, that's going to be strapped right in tight to the wing up here pretty much the most the logistical thing is this this is the ecu connector this goes on one side of the ecu i want that in the car so it physically goes in the car that's fine but as you can see we've only really got eight inches or so to play with on the wiring so that's going to all have to be extended it's not that difficult, there's not a ton of wires. So basically, this is gonna be bolted to this just like it would be on the bulkhead. So that's gonna be perfect. All this is all gonna be um, taped up nicely and attached to a bracket. And I'm gonna have it upside down, similar to like that. So it's almost like an OE car on the folds. The relays were up underneath the dash anyway. These are for the fuses. So all the fuses from outside the engine bay, they were gonna sit up like that. It's gonna be nice and tidy. Um, and then you're gonna when we make a plate or something up to cover this hole. And uh, yeah, it's gonna look nice. It's gonna look tidy. But if you look from the Vauxhall from the factory anyway, they don't even bother covering this wiring and that because it goes underneath the dash, don't even see it. So I just pulled out the glove box, makes it a lot easier to see down the back here. Um, I've just got the this main connector in a position, moving the wires around in the position that I want it. The only bit I've got to work out quickly is where to mount this ECU, because when I've mounted this ECU up, I can start extending the ECU connector. Once that's wired in, it's only the engine bay to salt, so behind here is fine. But if you compare this to the RS, look how much wiring is in this car. This is just, a section behind the dash. At some point, I will go through this all. It's not gonna be done right now because I wanna get the car back running. But you can see the amount of wiring and it's literally, because this car don't run anything, you're running some heaters, which ain't even needed anyway. And we've got the door locks. And the problem is we've got like stability control and all that left in it, ABS. And this is the problem. Most of this stuff is not even being used. You can see it's all tucked back and all sorts of things. So it needs to come out at some point. Um, it's going to be done when all the car is back together, maybe in the next couple of months, wherever I'll rip the whole dash out and do it properly like the RS. But for now, I just want to relocate this engine bay loom and get the car back together. So this is the plug that I've just started separating. This is the one for the ECU power and all the sensors. But you can see that half the wiring obviously already goes back to the connector inside the car. And then I've literally only got to extend these ones that go back into the engine loom. So these ones will pull back that way, whereas these ones have to be extended, obviously, to go back and follow it. So it ain't gonna be like I've got to cut and connect every one of these wires, which wouldn't be a big deal anyway. You can see I've just cut one already because this was the tightest one, and that will be joined. But then, literally, it's a case of just extending these four or five wiring that go here, and then that'll pull it all the way back there, and I can connect it back to the ECU. Right, so now everything is inside the car. Literally, that's all I've had to cut. That five wires, these are going to be joined, extended down into the car. And you can see these ones are already spliced anyway to come up this way. So I could probably splice them in further down. See this green wire and the blue wire. They can be spliced, but these ones have to be extended. So, so luckily, bags and bags of uh, wiring where I've built wiring looms over the years, um, all brand new wiring. So I'll probably be able to match up the colours. This is from a custom Zedlet loom that I built from scratch. This is where I've got loads of things uh, all tag tagged up from it. So yeah, I'll be able to match up the like green with green, blue with blue, etc. So it won't even look like it's been done when it's in the car. So you see I've got all the different color wiring. Easy enough, it's extended. This is all proper automotive wiring as well, thin walled, 12 volt. So if you're ever attempting any of this sort of stuff yourself, just make sure you've got tons of shrink tubing. I, got, I like to go for the ones with the uh, glue inside them. You don't have to do that. Every side you can imagine, braided stuff. Um, you can buy these in packets. I like to just buy them in three, four, five metre lengths. So if anyone wants to know how many wires you've had to cut, because uh, I know a few people are going to be attempting this, it's seven, seven wires that need to be extended. If 
thing I like about good quality automotive wiring, especially brand new, the copper's so good on it, the solder takes to it so well. Old Ford wiring, 30 year old wiring, solder takes to it nasty. I always like to use the shrink tubing with the glue inside it, just keeps it waterproof. Although this is interior, it's much better to be uh, waterproof. The ECU connector extended. Now when you do wiring, try to stagger all the wiring. You can see most of it is staggered. Have it all staggered out like that and you have no problems. Right, so let's get to joining these wires back together. And then um, literally that is it for this section of the loom. And then I've just got to see what I've got to extend in the engine bay, I imagine that some bits in the engine bay I've got to extend. Soldered together now, there's not much room in the engine bay to be able to video that, so I thought I'd just get on with it. Do it, you can see all joint, all proper heat shrink connectors. So this is literally all we're dealing with now in the engine bay. All the other connectors, so that's gonna be right tidied up. So really tightly down so it gets as small as possible. So this is the section now in the inner wing, and what I'm doing is I'm separating any of the wiring that needs extending. So see it all goes round here but we're falling short probably about a foot with the um, headlight wiring it's on a separate loom you can see um, this has got to come up about a foot around this corner up to where the headlight sits so that's all going to have to be extended um, and also we're going to cut out and trace this slot back because this is not needed anymore it's for the uh, old alarm system but mine goes into the horn and stuff so it's a uh, much 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 louder than the original especially when the batteries run out so the reason that why well, a lot of these wires are tight is because they all use the same connector so you can see i've just chopped the yellow power wire off of these and you can see it's obviously going to be pointing backwards so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut them cut this lot off i've just cut them two out you can see that share the same one and i'll join it this way you can see as soon as you cut that you're free you can get right up to where the headlight is so as long as I just extend that, join that into there, instead of being up there, I can join it in up here, and it's a lot more simple. Basically, you can see that, that well, them wires were attached up there at the joiner, but that joiner goes all the way round to the other side of the headlight, because obviously they work on both at the same time. And because that was shorter, I can now just attach them yellow wires at this section instead. So I'll just join them both in up here, and that way I ain't got to extend anything. Just splice them into that simple so obviously i've just cut out them two wires and i don't want them to just be going to nowhere and causing a problem um, i've cut the wire and i'm just going to join that straight together so there's no joining it at all now so same with this connector as well don't have to keep showing you but that's just basically what i'm doing um, any of the wires like that they always obviously go around to the other headlight so i'm just going to join them cut these join them back together shrink tube them over and then get rid of the tag end and i'll just bring that tag end and join it in further along right so that headlight now is everything's cut all the connectors and everything um most of them share the same earths um and you've just got to say that's the earth that's the signal um it's so simple where it works it's really nothing complicated at all you know you've got another earth another signal two wires you've got three wires for the motor really easy circuit so i'm going to pop the headlight back in now into where it goes up here and then i can start extending the wiring get them in place this side's all good this side lined up really well so you can see so that don't have to be extended well after loads and loads of soldering that you didn't need to see all these wires are now connected all the earths you can see nice junction of earths there just got to uh, heat that one up to shrink it down all the connectors are in the back of the headlight and the little sub loom goes down the back here now into the main loom the main loom is going to run across the crash bar you can see it's going to run across here then under here again and then round the back here right so after much deliberation i've managed to figure out where i want to put the ecu and you can see here i bolted it to the back of the bulkhead lovely secure position and um, i've modified the alloy bracket that comes on the car originally so it's got some heat dispersion so you've got the alloy bracket and it's still got the barometric pressure sensor in there as well um, i found a nice little spot that i'm moving the fuses to so they're going to be uh, about there and i've just drilled in a hole in the back as well so they're going to sit on there like that on their plastic hanger i can access them from underneath nicely like that and uh, another little funny thing is the relays so 
I was just playing with them and they all clipped in together. So everything clips in together in a nice little neat position. So the last of the fuses that need to go in the fuse box is obviously this 80 amp from the power steering pump. The good thing is now I can shorten that right down because it doesn't have to come all the way up here. That's just gonna go into the car just basically from there. And um, this will also plug in straight into the car. And this will earth in the car. So you won't even see the loom coming off that either. So result. So I've just stripped down the wiring so you can see what I'm dealing with. It's such a simple design. I've had to wire these in for a standalone issue in the past, so I know they work. Obviously, these are just the power, the red, the earths, the uh, brand, and this is the control switch for it. So you can just run these so that they turn on just on ignition. These turn on obviously from a signal. That's why they've got a free pin. And uh, you can see it's almost a universal fit. You could fit it to any car really. Right, so it's about time I go over this loom now and get it all tidied up. So I'm just going over it now. I just started it off with that tether tape. Um, if you don't know what it is, it's this stuff and it's uh, brilliant, brilliant stuff. It's for all motive wiring. Uh, I've got a couple of big rolls of it and uh, you need, well, I'll go for the 19, 20 mil one. Uh, you can go as thin as you want or thick as you want. Also, while I'm there, I bought a uh, hundred of these cable ties. Now, these cable ties are brilliant. So if you look on your original wiring, you'll have tons of these cable ties attaching it all to the bodywork everywhere. Basically, you just drill a six mil hole, put that through it, tie it up, and it tidies it right up. So you're gonna see how nice that looks. I'm gonna cable tie it all up in these arches. You can see there's the holes there for it. Right, so I've just put the pump back in just to check how it's all going to sit. Um, I've also put in the crash bar and the headlights just so I can tuck all the wiring behind it and make sure I've got all the right length. So up here is about the only bit, obviously that's going to go in there, that ain't going to come out of here. But I was just getting the length. It does plug in the um, wiper motor, but I don't want that plug being there like that. I want it down there and I want the wiring coming through the inner wing there. So that's going to have to be extended. That's for the alarm. That's got to be extended. So we're going to extend them about a foot up here. That's the last of the extending after that. So down here, all the wiring is tucked up under this crash bar. And this is all you're going to see. That is the wiring tucked. So the last part we've got to do is the starter loom that's down the back there. But other than that, that is tucked. One good thing as well, there's no wiring got to go along the bulkhead. This is going to be moved back here, so that's going to be cleaned up. This can go in the car now. This is the traction control loom, which normally went across here, looks ugly. That can go in the car now. And so can that, that's the uh, wide band for the AEM gauge. So I've just started tucking up the wire is up in the arch. You can see how it's going to be. This is obviously the bits that I've just got to lengthen that's why i've left them uncoated but this section here is all tucked up now so you can see it's going to come up here i've put it up in the recess of the turret so that it's nowhere near the coilover obviously the coilover is lovely and narrow checked it on the other side all the measurements are fine put in the arch liner up here that tucks behind there so that tucks behind the washer bottle it also tucks behind the um, fan control unit coolant ECU that's going to go up there these are going to be obviously wrapped up as well they're just there temporary at the minute just making sure everything fits so one other great thing about moving everything inside is this cable is now going to be really short so that's going to have no voltage drop this is the battery cable obviously these are the earths they're going to be mounted to a nice bolt that's welded into the chassis but these are the um, power cables. Now there's a power cable up here as well. They're all gonna be joined together and they're only gonna be have to move about three foot to get to the battery. So we're gonna have no voltage drop. And this connector, this brown one that goes to the starting and charging loom, it literally has only got five connectors in it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna order myself a five pin connector. It's pointless having this big connector when I can just have a five pin connector, plug it into the starting and charging loom and that get rid of that brown connector. So another little thing is, this is the uh, auxiliary water pump wiring relay. Uh, I've took that out, completely cut that out because that's not needed anymore. I haven't been running one of them for years. And this, this ain't, this is blank inside the relay box anyway. It's the brown relay, there's nothing going to it. So I've traced all the wiring back, cut it out. So we've got rid of two connectors and we've just got these ones. 
So I can also get rid of these brackets now. That one for the fuse box don't need to be there anymore. This is going to be moved off this turret as well. And this earth, this don't need to be here anymore because the earths are going to be inside the car. Because there's no way of finding a grommet for the car in the, the size that I cut the hole out to, I cut down the Cosworth grommet, ones that you use on the Cosworth loom, and it fits in there spot on. So now we've got plenty of protection, though the wiring can chafe or rub or cut into it. So finally, that is everything relocated now. You've got the ECU down there, all the relays, the fuse box is all at hand now, and then the glove box can go in here like that. And you won't see none of it. You just have to look right up there to see it. And you've got all them bits now to hand, relays, fuse boxes, the ECU, everything's there to hand. So I'm gonna move this out of the way at some point, just not yet. You can see how tidy that looks. And look how much better it looks in the engine bay. So that's the most important part, the engine bay. So now that it's completely wire tucked, that is how it looks. No wiring anywhere in the inner wings. Job done. So as you know, we're gonna be fitting a Co6 to this soon. And the cams in this engine are too aggressive for that Co6. They'll cause too much valve overlap and the uh, compression will just go straight out the exhaust, which is not what we want. So. Just got myself another set of cat cams. These are fast roads, so these would be absolutely perfect for the Co6, getting the most out of it. You can see the uh, stamp in the top there. So that's the part number for them. So we've got slightly aggressive inlet cam and a slightly less aggressive exhaust cam. So we're gonna keep the compression in where we need it to make the power. So finally, my tie rods turned up from Germany, which is the reason I ain't been able to put the front end back together. Um, because of all the bank holidays we've had lately, these somehow went missing, so I had to order another set. So yeah, you've seen these before in the, on the red car. These are exactly the same ones that I've used on there. Um, obviously, I'm not going to start painting these and lacquering them, but yeah, you can see they're exactly the same as the ones on this car. I think that now the wire tucking's nearly done, I've just got to finish a few bits off. I'm going to start getting these uh, suspension back and this car back rolling. Um, these wishbones got to be stripped down, I've got all bushes, tie rods, all sorts of things. So I think that's going to be my next job in the next video. So just tune in.